everything that was built on separation, one power over another, will continue to collapse because the Earth no longer supports this type of frequency of separation. The beings of light told me that we really don't have to do anything but watch them dissolve before our very eyes. It is such an exciting time here on Earth to see this huge shift and witness all these people awaken. You talked about prayer, and I know that uh, I've gone through this with my spirit guides and approaching it from a beg and victimhood. So begging, can you talk about that? Yeah, well, when you beg, you know, you beg, please, I really need help. You're actually gonna just get more things to beg for. Because the universe <laughs> is, you wanna beg? Here, we're gonna give you more to beg for. Let's get into the Akashic Records. Tell me a little bit about what are the Akashic Records? How does it work? Yeah, so the Kashuk records are like an energetic highway. It has all the information of our souls there. It has all the information of the universe, past, present, and future. So when we access the Akashic records, we're able to heal ourselves from the past, sometimes even the future. If we set intentions for a future that are negative, we can course correct once we realize that's not truly what we want. So when we access the Akashic records, we find everything that our soul is and our subconscious is holding on to that limits us from creating the life that we need. So when you access them, you uh, so much healing happens there. So course correction. Yes, course correction. So the more intentions you set, going back to this, the faster the universe responds to. So if you set a negative intention, you're going to see the results right away. Maybe you're going to stub your toe or something negative is going to happen to you. You can start course correcting. I know we can always go to a practitioner, but what if my viewers want to access the Akashic records on their own? What, what, how do they do this? It's actually very simple. It's more simple than people think. A lot of people do need to meditate to get into that science sound state so they can clear their minds so they can receive answers better. Sometimes it's just about intention. I set the intention, I'm in the Kashuk records. And then from there, you can use a pendulum and you can start receiving answers. Now the Kashuk records can be really tricky. You have to get permission if you're reading from another soul. Our souls are very protective. They're only gonna let people know what they want them to know in order for them to help you. Um, so negative polarities, what's that all about? Negative polarities are when we use the negative aspects of our souls. When we use the negative aspects of our souls, we lack uh, the energies coming into our energy centers. So then we can't really manifest and do what we want because we're not using our soul traits. So we can fall in the opposite divine communication. When you're not using it, mm -hmm. then you can just start talking and talking and talking and talking for the sake of just talking. And you're really not going anywhere. You're just spinning your wheels going backwards when you do that. And what would be an example of a negative polarity? A negative polarity, uh, we'll go with divine love. So divine love is section on the heart's chakra. When we're in the negative aspect of that, we shut our love off for other people. We shut off our compassion for other people. We start judging other people. And we just create a lot of issues around that because then we shut everybody off and we have nobody left. I noticed that you kind of bring in and I love that percentages of you had said there's 47% of your potentiality of communication, but yet you're at 57 of your soul yeah. makeup. So talk about the percentages. So the percentages, when we look at the soul, it's a, it's a great way for us to compare where we our souls are made and where we need to go and where we're going in life. So if we're say I'm 32% divine love and 58% divine communication, but I'm only using 30% that I know, okay, I need to start doing more energy healing with people. I need to start communicating more with them. So we can go back to how our souls were originally created, back to our soul maps, by looking at the percentages. It gives us a clear uh, reference of where we need to go, what we need to do in our new action plans so that we can align to what our soul is meant to do. So that's my next question is realignment. So realignment, yeah, we're just, we want to go back to your soul map how your soul was mapped when it was made. We're all made very different. And when we actually go back to our soul map, that's when we really shine. That's what we were created to do. That's what God created us to do. 
And when we realign to how he created us, we can do anything that we truly want in this world. Uh, something that also we talked about was the uh, the negative aspect of the, li the library. Yes. So there's lots of negative aspects that can happen when you're in the Kashyyyk records. Um, so say you go in there and you just want to get dirt on me. You're going to get a whole whack of no answers, really. They're going to spin you around. They're going to trick you because why would my soul give you information to harm me? And if you go in there and you're doubting that you're going to get answers, you probably won't get the answers. The Akashic records reflect back to you, your emotions that you're feeling when you're in there. So when you're accessing the Akashic records, it's very important that you go in with no judgment. You don't go in there hoping, oh, I hope this person was this person in a past life because the Akashic records can be like, oh, you want that to happen? We're going to make that happen for you. So you really need oh, to go wow. in there with a sound mind of what you actually want to accomplish. So I always set the intention. When I go into the Akashic Records to heal a client, I say, I'm going into the Akashic Records so I can heal my client in this area in life. So then I'm going to get that information pertaining to that life issue that they're facing so that way I can help them. Another negativity about the Akashic Records is you need permission. If you have permission, you're not going to be able to access. You're going to get just a lot of no's. So permission is very, very important. And if you go in there hoping I was this person in a past life and you have that true hope and you truly feel it and believe it, the Kashuk records are just going to reflect that back to you. Oh, wow. It's really complicated then. It can be very complicated. It can be really hard when you're in there. It's like learning a whole new database. When you, there's a new website that comes out and you don't know how to use this website, it's going to take time to learn how to figure out the website. There's no difference in the Kashuk records. We need to figure out how to use the Akashic Records to benefit us. The old Earth, as we once knew it, is collapsing. Some refer to this as the 3D dissolve. You were well aware before coming here to Earth that this choice would involve experiencing chaos and collapse. Now for many, it meant to serve the Earth's ascension process by holding your light for those that are frightened or spiritually unaware. Yes, many are still unaware, however, more and more are coming around. So what are signs that the three-dimensional Earth is collapsing? What do you see? Well, let's look around. Things, anything that wasn't built on truth. And truth equals love. But the love I'm speaking of is what I call the high heart love. It's that big love. It's not the human ooey gooey love. Um, it is, stands for living our very essence. So that love is, is strong. That love says what needs to be said. It does what needs to be done, even if it's not popular, even if it's not welcome but it comes from a place of knowing and that truth stands alone. And less and less are we gonna use our words, more and more it's the energy that comes behind the words that fills in the explanation. You know, it seems like many that are experiencing, let's say fear or despair, they seem to be unaware of what's going on. They just, do you, do you know what Yes, I'm I do. Well, and again, if all walks are holy, all journeys are sacred. We must come from that place. It doesn't mean it feels good to watch someone in the illusion yet creating unnecessary havoc in the world or unnecessary pain. But we know not what that soul wants to check off their list yet this time. There's a, bun, a, a lot of souls that said, I'm done learning from the illusion of verse school. I just want to remember yeah. truth. And then there are those remember that they left one or two things unchecked in their list. And they said, that soul said, I want to excavate more richness, more learning from the illusion. And so they may not do it this lifetime, but they will come around and get 
puff free of the illusion and come in as one of these beautiful, bright babies who remember who they are. There is no down, downside with death. Death has been a program here, a fear program. It is just a transition. And I always say, when you make peace with death, you start to live. Now, it's obvious that you've done a lot of soul work, right? Mm. Um, do you ever get tempted to fall into that anger <laughs> trap <laughs> or fear? Do or... I have a human suit here? Yes. <laughs> do you exercise? Yes. And But the difference is, it's like my soul holds me accountable because once you know something, you can not unknow truth. Once you've heard it, you can try to deny it, but it doesn't let go of you. So the difference is that, oh yeah, wow, I, I, feel, afraid. I feel afraid. Oh yeah, that's just worry, Julie. I feel worried. I catch it really, really fast. And the reason why I catch it really fast, I'm so in tuned with my holy vehicle here that it, if I'm not feeling peaceful, all that's telling me is there's something there to acknowledge, to voice, to feel. So I ask everybody their definition of sovereignty because it's such a hot topic. Can you help me with that? Yeah, that word is really rising because it's true. We are a sovereign being. We decided to come play in this illusion. And this is where we have to take responsibility for our soul's journey. And when you take responsibility that our soul has been planning this all along, trust me, I had plenty of shake my fist moments with my soul and said, oh sure, you designed this and then you sent me down to go play it out for your learning and expansion. You get down here and play with me. <laughs> And that's really what's happening, is the human and the soul are to get on the same page and walk this journey together. And as you merge your human with your soul and the human relaxes and the soul takes over, your divine essence, your I am presence comes in. And in that space, you walk, you model it. You're not talking it. You're walking it, not by what you do, but who you are, shall they know your name. You're not teaching it, you're, you're modeling it. And people go, wow, how come you're so peaceful when all this is falling away? You know, while I was listening to you talk, there was a couple lights that showed up around you. And then all of a sudden, you were inspired space and then i was like <laughs> i'm in space there's stars we just <laughs> like we shifted backgrounds uh -huh. does that ever happen to you where yeah. you're talking to somebody and you're like it's like the walls disappear yes we have to remember the third 3d was a construct it was dense energy it was form we're letting go of form and we're moving back to shape. Now, the shape of the soul, the shape of things. Well, the mind can't do anything. It like, goes on tilt when it tries to ca calculate that. But if you breathe into it, you're like, yeah, I don't get it, but it's true. So what we're doing is experiencing shape. We're, we're not just Oh, Craig sitting in that chair, Julie sitting here. We're also expanding into the, the vastness of our soul experience. And we're starting to have experiences, which you could call multidimensional. They're beyond this linear time frame, And it's going to start happening more and more to people. I've got some exciting news. For those of you that have been watching this and all the other Life to After Life series, we'll now have a place to go where endless topics on spirituality will be made available. We will be uploading lectures that will give you the know-hows and the tools to make your ascension easy. Now the knowledge that I've gained through the making of the Life to After Life series combined with the divine downloads that I receive will be broken down into lecture courses. You will be able to have that life that you've been longing for. So go to lifetoafterlifeacademy.com and see what we have in store for you. Now, 
as we clear old dense energies of the past, so also must Earth clear herself of heavy energies that have been stored in and on her for centuries. Thousands of years of three-dimensional thinking with the motive of taking, possessing, regardless of the cost of others, separation, one power over another, is all dissolving. Now what is replacing is the fifth dimension. What is this new Earth we're referring to? So we're talking about the fifth dimensional Earth. Can you describe this fifth dimension, this new Earth? What's going to be like? The new Earth is where we all work in unity and harmony um, for the one. We change the way that we've been doing things so that it works with nature. The one is everything. It's all beings, all entities that are together on this planet is part of the one. There is no separation. So rather than destructive measures, um, greed, all of that will be changing into unity and harmony and love and working for each other. I call it bringing heaven to earth and earth to heaven. So no more... Uh, uh, lower level, vibrational, emotional stuff will not... No more fear. Can't, no more judgment. Won't exist, cannot. And Gaia Earth will also be in that new frequency. Yes. So Ah, okay. Yes, we will all be as one. And not only that, but we will be working in partnership more closely with our loved ones who have left. There will be an understanding that there is no death. You can come and go as you please. No one will grieve because they know that you're choosing your time, and that's up to you. So would you say that the veil will be gone? Yes, the veil will be lifted. Ah, so no more amnesia. No more amnesia. We'll see each other in our divinity. We'll be working together. You know, I think you mentioned earlier um, this misconception of prayer. But it's kind of gotten out of hand, this word prayer. Yes. In the uh, spiritual community as well. It's... Right, because we're always connected to higher consciousness. We're always connected to all that is and ever will be, to God, God force, the source. We're always connected... If we weren't, we would be dead. Our physical bodies would be dead. It's our life prana, is it's our soul. So we're always connected. And I've had people come to me and say, oh, I prayed all day for this, for that. I'm like, why are you praying? <laughs> every word that comes out of your mouth, every thought you think is a prayer. We walk in prayer. Well, I think they're trying to make a a focused attempt. I'm going to pray. I'm going to put this emotion. I'm going to really pray. I'm going to really... Well, walk in peace. Walk in love. That is prayer. So when they say uh, this buzzword of clearings, what do you... Uh... What do you attribute that to? Clearing up your energy, clearing up the cobwebs from past lives that you brought forward, anything that's holding you back, fear, any lower level vibrations that keep you down, um, sad, you know, not thinking that life is worth living to live, you know. <laughs> Don't know anything about that. I know everything about it. Yeah, me too. I'm like, why am I here? And not only that, <laughs> there's a lot of people <laughs> that are experiencing this right now who think that I never, <laughs> I, sh I never signed up for this. And I'm like, well, oh, yes, she did. <laughs> yeah, right. Right, because no one's a victim. There were no blindfolds. You saw what was transpiring on Earth, and you actually volunteered to come so that you could work through all the things. Because now is the opportunity to clear so many things that were embedded in your DNA, your you know, unique chemistry. Now's the time for all this. It's all coming up. Revelations and everyone and everything. So you, you did say that these clearings tend to choose the path of least resistance. And what were you meaning by that? Many times we clear in our dream state. A lot of people uh, will have nightmares. They'll come to me because I do dream interpretation too. 
and they'll say, oh my God, I had this nightmare and you know, this was happening and all this crazy stuff. I didn't know why. And I'm like, because you're clearing. We clear through the process of least resistance. And even though it may feel like you're still experiencing those things when you wake up, all of a sudden they dissipate and they go away naturally. I know you said that the, these clearings are, are the, the process is often um, temporary, I think you said? Yeah, it's very temporary. It's just like what I told you about laying on, you know, the couch with a bag of chips and watching movies. <laughs> Sounds fun. I know. It, it sounds fun, but it hurts the whole time because you're crying about your stuff. <laughs> you're looking at their stuff. <laughs> so you're going through this process, but it's very temporary. You give it the way through. You allow it to go through you. You do not suppress anymore. It's out. Maybe you need to do it again in a month. Do it. Don't be afraid of yourself, of feeling. Because we, when we go home, everything is feeling. It's 100% feeling. It's so amazing. And we're here to learn. We've been silenced, you know, as children for many generations, not to say anything. And now it's time for us to say stuff and feel and- No repressing. Be alive. Yes, you cannot be your authentic self if you're suppressing. Now why would anyone in their right mind want to volunteer to be incarnated into let's say an abusive relationship or perhaps a hardship life? I understand that just doesn't seem to make any sense. But it is these adversities that have such great learning lessons built in. Now these adversities may take us down and break us. However, it is up to us as to how we overcome these life lessons. So the sooner we recognize these lessons are for us and we stop the victim mindset, we are able to rise above and ascend. After all, an easy life has very little life lessons. It is the difficult ones that gain the most advances. But I would like to add one more thought here. We can also learn from joy. Again, it is up to you on how you want to move forward in your life. You know, many of us are choosing to be incarnated into abusive families, alcoholism, loss. And uh, I feel like our soul felt pretty confident that we could overcome. How do you feel about these things, making these choices to incarnate into these? Let's say, example for you, experience that loss. These are instant transcendent events. And anyone can have that right when they realize that's what it is. But too many times people want to be defined by the event itself. But mm. really, the event itself is the transcendence. Now, after we rise above these adversities, I'm seeing that many of them are inclined to help others. Do you see that in here? I do. It's it's what happened to me. I'm 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 three months into Dakota's transition, and I know I knew right away that the rest of my life will be to help humanity. And if every single person realized that, and there's a lot of us that are doing exactly that, but if we all did exactly that, we've actually transmuted the pain here on planet Earth to the light and the wholeness. You and I talked about that word allow, spiritual allow, uh, you know, acceptance. I think, I, think, I think it all kind of works together. It's allow, acceptance, and trust. Mm -hmm. I think it really, it's those trifecta of allow, acceptance, and trust. Just keep that, hold that. Yes. While you're going through these adversities, would you... Would you agree? I do. And that's what, that allows the heart to stay open when it wants to close. And if the heart is open, 
then your energy can still pour out into the world. And it's also, it keeps the connections. It, ke it keeps the connection on a soul level. Our time here is limited. We're not defined by just the body. This is a limited time that we're here. So it really lets us remember we're a soul. You know, you and I were kind of talking about this kind of being an illusionary game that we're here, this illusion. How do you feel about that illusionary game? Perspective. Yeah, so it, it's an illusion in the fact that nothing here is permanent and that what is permanent is the inner awareness and all of us have it. And when we come from that point, it takes the importance off of all the outside things because they are just things. And yet they're full of energy and feedback. It's a feedback system. Our environment gives us direct correlation to us remembering that we're here to make an impact. We're supposed to impact those around us by shining light and love. It's really that simple. Did you sign up to be here at this time for this great awakening? I did. I absolutely did. I know my purpose to be here now is to show that the heart is the way to lead humanity with love, regardless of the circumstance. So would it be safe to say that every soul had this knowing deep within before coming here? We knew. We're remembering. We're, we're starting to wake up. We're no longer a species of humans that are in amnesia. We're starting to remember why we're here, why we reincarnated to begin with. Do you find yourself going about your day wondering what has happened to the world? Are you done with the fear, confusion, and anger you're seeing all around you? Is listening to the news, trips to the grocery store, and how you see your job just not the same as it once was? We have a new lecture course on navigating out of 3D. Now we're here to tell you that there is a better life out there waiting just for you. We have answers to questions you might be asking and divine guidance on how to rise above it all. Now go to lifetoafterlifeacademy.com to see this lecture course and more. The Akashic Records were mentioned earlier in the Life to Afterlife series, so it only seems fitting to explore this library of sorts in much more detail this round. Now, The Akashic Records is a complete and concise collection of every word, thought, event that have occurred in our past, present, and even our future. Now, The future, of course, is ever-changing depending on our present thoughts and emotions that we put forth. But seeing the future timeline can give us a rough idea of possible outcomes if we decide to stay on the course that we're on. Run this by us, how we access ourselves, the Akashic Records. What do we do? It's pretty simple. Uh, you can meditate if you like so that you can clear your mind, take some deep breaths. Uh, for visual people, they can imagine walking up a stairs to, say, the fifth floor, because that's where the Kashuk records are held, is at the fifth dimension. You could take an escalator, you can fly up there. However you it resonates to you to access the Kashuk records, me, I, it's just all about intention. I set the intention, I'm in the Kashuk records. I am there now. Now I can start accessing information. So what I do is I grab my pendulum so that I know my clear answers, and I ask, am I in the Kashuk records? Now my pendulum is swinging, yes. My spirit guides and the Kashuk records are helping me gather this information. And now I can ask, do I locate my soul in the Akashic records? And of course I'm gonna get a yes, because our souls are always open to ourselves. Now, if I'm accessing it for somebody else, 
I would ask, do I locate the soul? I would use their full name at birth, full present name, birth date, and place of birth so that I know I'm accessing the right soul. And from there, I can start asking questions. What is Craig's primary chakra that he runs off of? And then I go through them and I start asking questions. I can start asking questions about a past life for that person. And that's where I gain my information from. So pendulums are really helpful in gaining access to the Akashic records because sometimes our self-doubt might come in or not. Oh, is this answer even right? Am I getting the right answer? So when we use the pendulum, then we can see. And then it starts removing self-doubt. Okay, so you obviously know exactly, oh, that's a yes, oh, that's a no, this is a maybe so. How does one get a pendulum? How do they program it? How do they put, how do they put that together? So run this by me. Really simple as well. A lot of this is really simple. People, they think that it takes a lot of practice. It really doesn't. So all you do when you get a pendulum, hold it in your hand, put your energy into the pendulum and say, I set the intention. This pendulum is programmed to me. And then there, it's programmed. It's really that simple. And then you go and you ask your pendulum, can you give me a yes answer? Mine swings forward. It's different for everybody. I do believe yours was clockwise in a circle for yes. Now I ask, give me a no. There's my no, it's swinging sideways. And then I ask, give me a maybe. So mine's just gonna go in circles. <laughs> it's just gonna keep swinging in circles and the answers never change. If you're ever out and about and you need a pendulum, you can use your necklace. Anything that swings, just say, I set the intention, I'm programming this pendulum to me and your answers are gonna remain the same no matter what pendulum you use or what necklace you use. Okay, so let me see if I got this right. We decide to go to the Akashic Records uh, for me, I'm going to go up that set of stairs and I'm going to see that grand marble columns and all this stuff and these big doors. And I go in, I walk in, I can feel all this information and everything. And I sit down at a chair and then I start out with my pendulum and ask, am I what? A am I locating my soul in the Akashic Record? And then you just start going through there and writing down the questions and yes. the, uh, the answers. Yes. So how important is the past life? Like you mentioned two lifetimes ago at age 24, some kind of thing happened with me with, to create that. So how, how, how important does the past life thing play into all of this? It's very important. Our souls, we, we've been existing for almost eternity. So our souls are gonna carry all this baggage around with us. Our subconscious is really gonna hold on to it. So when we come into this life and we make a new choice about a job career, maybe in a past life, we failed at this one job and we had anxiety around it. So we started a new job that's somewhat similar. We are at that same vibration as that past life. So our subconscious is gonna keep bringing those negativities back to us from that past life. Our souls never forget anything. They will never forget anything. We forget when we come in this lifetime, because I mean, it would be really hard to try to comprehend all the many past lives we've had and then try to live this life as the divine creatures we truly are. That's a lot of information. However, our subconscious still knows it, our soul still know it, and it keeps bringing us back to those past life feelings and emotions. Some people will go to therapy for years, having no idea where a lot of their issues stem from. I go in the Kashuk Records, Oh, three lifetimes ago, your mom put a negative intention on you that you're going to fail. So now your self, your self doubt is really strong and it's going to stop you and block you from doing what you want in life. So we just need to do what? Once we find out that there was this blockage, like you made this example, what, what, what does that person do to? There's, there's many different ways that a person can clear it. It really is a matter of getting subconscious to release that negativity. So you could do a 21 days where you repeat every day, I am releasing this block. I am releasing this vow from this past life. So your subconscious starts knowing it. However, we still need to make new actions to offset it. So if we have an action of self-doubt, and I ask my clients, well, what is the one thing that you doubt yourself the most in this lifetime? Oh, I doubt myself making a program for my business. Okay, well now we're gonna have to actually take new actions and step forward. So that way we can clear it and we tell our subconscious every day, we're gonna release this, we're gonna release this. Now the world and the way it's going, we're releasing things so much more quicker. Some people can say, oh, I know exactly where this came from. Now I can release it immediately instead of wondering, well, where did it come from? How did this happen? So it's a lot easier 
to just release nowadays, especially when you know the root cause. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really helps to know exactly what it is you're releasing. Yeah. I have a lot of clients that suffer with PTSD. Mm -hmm. It actually came from maybe two lifetimes ago, one lifetime ago when they were in the war. Mm -hmm. And they're going, oh, where's my PTSD coming from? So they go to talk therapy and they're talking forever about their PTSD. But they don't know where it comes from. So how can they cure it? Well, I struggle. I have stressed out with this. I stressed out with this. I stressed out with this. But it's not really the root cause. So they're going to keep holding on to it. So when we realize that the PTSD actually comes from a past life in a war, then you can easily let it go. It's like, oh, okay, this wasn't even affecting me in this life. I'm going to release this. Cause really, it doesn't play a part in this life anymore. So we release it. I had PTSD from my car accident. And after doing a session with me, it was gone. It was my whole life just transformed by really realizing where a lot of my triggers come from. A lot of my triggers came from past lives. Some came from 3000 lifetimes ago when I was like in Egypt mm -hmm. and I'm querying it forward. And I had no idea where it's going from. I spent 10 years in therapy trying to figure out where's my depression coming from? Where's my anxiety coming from? My self doubt, for example, came from as three months old by watching my family dealt themselves. And until I knew that block restriction, I didn't, I had no idea where it came from. And I struggled with this self-doubt for years and years. So going back to that three-year-old child might be a little bit sketchy, but if you can get into the Akashic Records, you're going to see exactly from a third-party point of view what exactly happened. Exactly. Exactly. Sometimes when children go through traumatic situations, to us parents or adults, we're, that's not really traumatic. But at that age group, that's really traumatic for a child. And the subconscious is going to keep carrying that forward. So during your... NDE, I understand that you were able to see all the different lives and all the different personalities that you had embodied in different our incarnations. Can you tell me a little bit about what profound message that seemed to give you? Um, during my NDE, um, I visited the Akashic Records. They call it the Hall of Akashic Records and the Realm of the Akashic Records. And I was able to see not only myself, but everyone I ever encountered over all of my lifetimes. But I was only viewing it from a place of unconditional love and no judgment. No one had made any mistakes. There were no wrong turns. And um, it was only seen from a place through divine eyes of each other coming to the earth and having our lives. But you saw yourself as different personalities, right? Oh, yes. I saw myself as many different facets of me, is what I call it. My other lives, my incarnations, and other times, um, periods, and eras. And um, when I saw who I was, I was like, oh, my God. What have I ever been afraid of? I've been through so many different personalities, male, female, planets vibrations and I was like we're so astounding as divine beings and um, what it meant to me was that I could come here and do this and I knew that this incarnation no matter what happened I could rise above it so I would think with all these different personalities when you run into people that are I don't know nice mean well when I came back I brought back the ability of no judgment so I saw everyone as a divine being. However, I had to learn discernment, how to discern the well-meaning from the ones who have lost their way. Um, because I had to protect myself. We're still on a three-dimensional planet. And um, even though I loved everyone and saw why they were here and I honored them, I couldn't be a part of everyone's life. So during these different lifetimes, I'm sure you had embodied some some beliefs in these cultural beliefs viewing of different past lives all at once all at once in a flash of consciousness it came to me in a flash like a download into my memory bank and i saw it all at once it mm -hmm. wasn't there's no time when you once the spirit leaves the body and um i saw all cultures all times and who i was in response to those times you know, and I saw that this time, because of all of those other lives, I was shown that I was um, a peacemaker. Uh. I was a peacemaker, and I used 
it doesn't matter how big or how small the job was, I created peace in the space I was in. And I was also a sovereign being. I chose my, even though it didn't matter what was going on the earth, my freedom meant the most to me during those times. Because of your NDE, you brought back some amazing gifts that you could read people. Yes. Um, I work right now in soul, soul sessions with others um, who come to me when they're ready to make big changes in their lives. Um, what I do is I help them to shift their perspective and to see the higher view of why this is occurring in their life. So it's not exactly a mediumship. Oh, it's not mediumship at all. However, loved ones do come through occasionally. I do have that ability. Sure. My abilities are uh, multifaceted. We all are. Okay, so I grab from the bag. I just open myself up fully to mm -hmm. hearing in any which way that I can how to shift the person I am work with their perspective so that I can open the door to change. However, they have to walk through it. It's their responsibility. I cannot save anyone. I can only help facilitate them into growing, learning, stretching, expanding, and being the best they can be, their highest potentiality. Now with your uh, clients, you're able to also understand why they were incarnated. So in the sessions, yes. you're able to really give them that super view of why they're here. What's the, what's the purpose? The way I work with Akashic Records, because everyone has their own way. We're all unique in the way that we work with it. Um, what I see is what they're bringing forward from another lifetime that they were not able to let go of, heal, uh, integrate into their system, let go of, and uh, grow from. And I say, oh, you're carrying that over from this time, this lifetime where this happened, but you left before you had the ability to heal it. So we talk about that. Yes. And how it affects this one. Um, because it's embodied in your DNA. It's in your... Um, everything that you bring with you it's our what i call our god code our dna <laughs> comes with us from past lives that we actually were like i need to learn that <laughs> even though when you learn it you're like wow this is hard <laughs> overcoming is not easy it's work and i always tell everyone i'm gonna open the doors but <laughs> you have to walk through them <laughs> and i'm cheering you on <laughs> It's beautiful because when the light goes on in someone's eyes who's sitting in front of me, they'll go, when I tell them what they're bringing forward, you know, and this is what's happening. Does this sound familiar? They'll go, oh my God. And it's validation. And it shifts their perspective that I can overcome this. I wondered why this chaos and discord that's going on around us never really seemed to bother me. So I asked the beings of light and they helped me to understand why, but they also helped me to remember the importance of this particular time. I distinctly recall being very excited before my trip here as Craig to witness this magnificent transformation and to be of service and help. I can come here, clean up a couple karmic cobwebs, be a light holder, usher in the new earth, now, if you sit with it, meditate, or observe, you too will begin to remember that you also signed up for this. So what are your thoughts on this shift that we're going from third to fifth dimension? What's your thoughts on this? It is time. I mean, if we want to blame someone or something now, let's blame time. <laughs> It's time to do this. And within each of us, there is that, let's say, soul alarm clock, and it's gone off. And that's why many people are starting to question how they're doing things, why they're doing things, well, why they're participating in things. But this shift is really to let go of the human story, the illusion of how we thought the world was, to walk into a world that is true. And that the truth is, there is no them, there is no us. We're all on the same bus. 
I'm one such as you. We are all part of one. We all came from the one. And to let go of that thinking of separateness, which judgment comes into that. And so can you imagine a world where we all get up and it's natural and normal to help the next, whether you know them or not? So how about we establish the purpose of the third dimension? What was, the, okay. what was that all about? Why do we have to go through that? Yeah, good question. Well, I have a theory. And I sometimes like to share things through cartoons is how it's shown to me. But what if we were all as souls with the creator of all that is? And we're like, love, 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 love. This is boring. Love. Can't we experience something more? Aren't we supposed to evolve and have greater experiences of love? How can you know love more unless you experience what it isn't? Mm -hmm. And so the game of duality appeared. And, and so what if creator said, wow, I've got a good game for you kids. What if we have a planet where you put on this suit and you get spiritual amnesia and you forget who you are. And by the way, you can have lots of cool experiences, lots of opportunities to create all kinds of ways you forget. And what will happen is, you will have all these feelings that will come up because of those experiences. And that will be your richness. That's what you will bring home and feed back to me so I can experience it too. And at some point, I'm gonna blow the whistle and say, well done, my children. Time to remember who you are, come on home. And that's what happened in 2008. The end of times as we know it, how do you see the new earth? It's, it's, a, it's a transition. It's not like a lot of the mind, again, wants to say, wow, one day we're in 3D, poof, we're going to be in five. <laughs> now, that would be nice, but that's not the way the game is arranged in my awareness. So it, we're in it. There are plenty of people right now that are living the 5D. They, they have, for whatever reason, they mm -hmm. were to create those energy pathways so that it's easier for the masses to come along. Yeah. And remember, a head is just a, pl a place. It's not a rank. It's not better. In fact, in a lot of ways to wake up right now is so much easier than when we started doing the work. And I tip my hat to all those that came before me that paved the way for me to do my work because yeah. everything is connected. I kind of equated it to, uh, do you remember when we didn't have cable? and uh, you're a county that doesn't have cable and all of a sudden you, this county now has cable. <laughs> oh, wow. I can do this and that. And it, this, to me, that's, that's what I'm benefiting from in the fifth dimensional earth is just going, oh, wow, I have these new abilities that, or I have these new things or the veil's thinner, everything. You know? Yeah, and we're not learning things. I really want people to get that. We are remembering them. The, the human had to learn. The soul remembers. It's like, oh yeah, oh, these powers are coming back online. I remember when I could whatever in the physical. Yeah. And what people call miracles are becoming everyday events now. Right. Every day, it's common. There's a great song that's called Everything is Holy Now. And it was written after 9-11. And it's by Peter Mayer, M-E-Y-E-R, I believe. I'm getting him a, I guess I'm giving him a plug. He's actually from uh, Roseville, Minnesota, I believe. Um, and anyway, he's got a line in there. I used to look for miracles. Now I look around and everything's a miracle. It's like the shift in perspective from human perspective to soul perspective is two completely different worlds. And they exist side by side right now.
heard many people talk about a place of darkness. And of course, some may have a knee-jerk reaction that this place of blackness may be scary. But contrary to what some would believe, it's actually very comforting and loving. You had mentioned to me about going into the void. And then there are others that just kind of fear the dark. Talk to me about not fearing. You don't, obviously, you don't strike me as one that fears. It's, it's, the void is the space of potential, too. It's in the dark that nothing has the light shown on it yet. So it's a matter of perception. And if you realize that you have the power to perceive, then you can perceive the dark as a point of the point of where everything begins. And when I go into meditation, I go into the void, which is the space of nothingness and everything all at once. I mean, it, it, it still amazes me that there are people out there just hung up on these demons and the spiritual warfare. And I just don't, I have no idea what they're talking about. It's just not in my life. Is that, is that in your life? It's not. And I think that all that is, is the power of thought created in your mind to take a form. Mm. So if you are not entertaining or creating something behind the thought form of a demon or dark energy, then it's not gonna be in your reality. That's why it's not in your reality because you're not creating an energy behind it. Now recently I've been noticing a strange and rather alarming phenomenon where everyday people are experiencing a terrifying dilemma of rampant evil. Now this could be a haunting feeling of being attacked or influenced by dark entities such as demons, Satan, or spiritual warfare. So how do we start? How do we begin to eliminate evil from our lives? Now when I beckoned Archangel Michael to assist me with my life to afterlife research, he came to my side immediately. But he taught me how to eliminate evil once and for all. Now, in this lecture-style course, I will show you Michael's secret weapon on how he deals with darkness, but more importantly, how it never, ever affects him whatsoever. This and many other techniques will be discussed in this lecture course called Eliminating Evil. You will find this course over at the Life to Afterlife Academy.com. So you strike me as a person that really has a good control over your emotions, am I correct? I've learned to navigate my emotions as an experience to be had and not let them depress me or take full space inside who I am. I've learned to allow them, allow your emotions to be there and to have them go through you in a sense. Allow them to be experienced. Just don't attach to them. You and I were having a lot of conversations about our word choices, changing our vocabulary. You know, words are spells. They're action. They change the frequency being had by the person who hears them. Mm -hmm. So by really aligning with the intention of what you have to say can shift the environment around you. There's experiments that when you talk to plants, they respond using the words that are either negative or positive. So if we're affecting the plants, we're definitely affecting the beings that are in our life. And the water responds to it. Actually, if you look at water, it does the same thing as the plants. Yeah. So water's frequency when you drink it, food that you eat holds the frequency. So even if you say a couple words over the food or water before you put it into your body, it actually changes the structure of it. It gives you more of the intention of the words that you spoke into it. Describe to me your, your view on the new earth. The new earth doesn't come from a point of judgment or separation. It's all about unity consciousness based on harmony and resonance. We have been taught 
that you're only one half of a couple, and that until you find Mr. and Mrs. Wright, you may be unhappy and incomplete. This is simply not true and is a 3D paradigm. Those that are awakened who know their spiritual truth about themselves and their partner bring love and respect to their relationship by allowing it to become a true 5D relationship. All right, what about um, maybe healing relationships? Healing relationships, that can be done with the Akashic Records. So when I go to the Akashic Records and I do relationship healing, I look at both of their soul maps. And I could do this with children, parents, grandparents, parents, anybody, really. Anybody that's in a relationship, friendships. And we look at what your soul map is. So then I tell them, okay, these are their soul traits. This is the other person's soul trait. Then you can really understand who they are at a higher level. And then we look at past lives. How many past lives have they had together? What kind of roles have they played? Maybe you and your spouse, you were his mother in a past life. So in this lifetime, you have that mother-son relationship. So then we, now that you know that that's how it is, then you can work towards getting over that. Sometimes you guys have karma from a past life that you're playing together. You guys can have soulmate contracts with other souls that can cause complications in the relationship. So we remove soul contracts. We move vows that are impacting the relationships. Sometimes there's negative thoughts. You had a really bad fight in the beginning of your relationship and somebody placed a negative thought onto you. Your spouse placed a negative thought onto you of you're really mean. Then you kind of buy into it. And then that energy is going to play within the relationship and flow in between it. So when we go into the Kashuk records, accessing both of the records, we clear both of the negative karma that the people in the relationship are playing with or playing together. So we talked about implants, negative implants. And I think you suggested how we can, first of all, let's identify what is an implant. An implant is something that's been implanted into our physical bodies that don't resonate with our bodies. Sometimes when we get fillings on our teeth, the metals can actually react negatively within our bodies. Or if you broke a leg, you have screws, you have metals. Um, I know the whooping cough vaccine has a lot of mercury in it. So we actually retone the metals and the implants to work with the body instead of against it. So we don't have any adverse effects for it. So you would do like uh, an Akashic record inquiry to find out how the fillings are impacting this particular person. Yeah. And then you go ahead and start to clear and heal that or reprogram it. Reprogram. Reprogram them. Yeah. Metal. We reprogram the implant so that it works with you. So we go and we just, again, setting the intention that this implant is actually going to work for the person instead of in a negative aspect. And we retone it almost like a vibration so that it vibrates positively with your body. So it works better for you. Now, did you say there was uh, etheric implants as well? Yes. So there's also etheric implants. So if you're in a past life and you go to war and you really don't want to hurt people in war, you can actually make what's called an etheric implant. It's like a software that you program within your own self so that you can sustain making negative choices. So you're implanting your soul with the ability to sustain these negative choices. And that always affects us negatively in this lifetime because then we're going to keep vibrating those same emotions of that etheric implant into it. Maybe in war, you had an etheric implant of aggression because you had to be more aggressive. So now it's going to actually make you more aggressive with a lot of areas in your life. Soul loss? Soul loss. Soul loss happens when we go through a really, really traumatic situation. I mean, this is where we don't want to actually remember. We will separate parts of our soul so we don't have to remember it. We don't have to replay those parts again. And when we have soul loss, we feel incomplete. We feel like there's pieces of us missing. What's wrong with me? Why don't I feel whole? And at least people going to therapy, figuring out why they're not whole. What's wrong with me? Why don't I want to be here? Why am I so depressed all the time? Why can't I just be happy? Yeah. It's because you're actually missing pieces of your soul. It's literally gone. Now, I know we all astral travel at night, but you had mentioned something about negative astral travel. Yes. So we can get stuck in negative astral travel when we sleep. And this is actually very common. So there's different places in the astral realm that we can get lost in. Now, it gets a little finicky when we talk about the astral realms because there's many different places we can go. We always leave our bodies when we sleep at night. 
We always do. And we go and get our energy source while we're sleeping. This is why sleep is very important for us. So there's two places in the astral realms that you can go to. You can go to one spot in the uh, astral realms where you're processing your thoughts and your emotions and everything for the day. This is where you get your really weird dreams. Your subconscious is just trying to place it all together so it can come up with really kooky dreams. And sometimes you can get stuck there. And when you get stuck in those, it gets diet, eating before bed, not exercising can actually put you in a negative astral travel in this area, in the astral realms. So you're going to wake up feeling tired all the time. You're going to feel stressed out all the time. No matter what you do, you're always going to feel stressed. Now, when you go to the other part in the astral realms, you actually access the Kashuk records. We go to the Kashuk records when we sleep all the time. So that way we can talk to our higher selves, our spirit guides at a soul level. And then we figure out what our next steps are. So this is where deja vu comes from. If you've had deja vu, it's because you were in the Kashuk records and you said, okay, we need to follow this plan and this plan and this plan in order to do what we want to do. So you already see it. You're already planning it. When you have a deja vu, it's like, hey, you're on the right path. Now you can get stuck there too. And when you get stuck there, sleep paralysis can happen. But not being able to get back to your body can happen as well. Bedwetting in children is sometimes because of this astral travel because they're not getting back to their body to be able to go to the bathroom. So it can cause a lot of insomnia even. People don't want to sleep because they just, they're not getting there. They're not getting their energy because they're stuck in the between astral states. A soul level bargain? Yes, soul level bargains are hap happen when we want to use somebody to get somewhere. Oh. So say, Craig, I want to use you so I can be famous on TV. But I'm using it in the negative aspect. I'm just using you. And that's never okay, right? So you're going to create a bargain and you're going to have that negativity come back in. So you're going to have other people come to you that just want to use you because your soul's like, hey, you want to use other people? We're going to bring people that want to use you into your life. So there's those soul level bargains. And this is all on the level of action. It's not like we're going to sign this contract and make a bargain. It's all about actions and your souls take it on as a bargain. So those are another negativity things that we find in the Kashuk records that we can help clear. Okay. So giving your free will up to another, like a straight jacket. Yeah. So if we give up our free will to somebody, sometimes we're in an abusive relationship. And so the, you know, the person that we're in the relationship with makes all of our decisions for us because we don't want to make decisions. We don't want to upset them. We're in a way giving our free will to this person or given to a parent and parents is that you're going to do this with your life. You're going to do this, this, this parent makes all of your choices. Um, it's like an energetic straight jacket. You lack, you're telling the universe, I'm not going to make my own decisions. So the universe wraps you almost like a straight jacket and you're not going to be able to make your own decisions. Wow. Now the person that's holding that constraint over to you, they're going to want to interject into everybody's life. They're going to want to say, no, you should do this. You should do that. You should go in this area in this life. And that's really never okay. So energetic straight jackets are really never okay to have. We never want to give our free will up to anybody because then we lack so much. The great Dolores Cannon developed a unique method of hypnosis called the Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique, better known as QHHT, that implements a very deep level of consciousness similar to the moments of just falling asleep and immediately after your first awakening. Now when I experienced my session, it felt like a very trance-like state and was very informative to me. So why is your work so important? My work is uh, QHHT at present. Uh, I've done a lot of different works, but this work is the most important work that has been ever given to me to do. And um, it helps to empower the person. And to me, that is the only true healing, is, is for the person to heal themselves. And I've always maintained that. So I'm, you know, just uh, so pleased that I've uh, discovered QHHT and I'm able to be part of it because it's a very important work. So why do we need to heal? We need to be whole. 
we need to um, to reclaim all our parts that have been blown apart by being in this third dimension. You know, we've uh, we need to to uh, integrate back with our higher self and blown apart. You mean past lives, this life, traumas, or something? Is that what you mean? The whole experience. Okay. Of being in third dimension. So we're broken apart. And yes, that's that's why we need healing. Okay. We need to, um, you know, bring. We need to come back into our powerful whole selves. We've been fragmented by uh, by our experiences, which are very harsh in this I like third that. dimension. So we're fragmented. Yeah. And we're going to come back together mm-hmm. slowly. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why this is a good. Yes. Yes. A good reason to heal. Yes. Yes. That's beautiful. Yes. One of the things that I discovered um, back in the early '70s is. Um, the Huna tradition, which maintains, that's where the term higher self came from. Huna? H-U-N-A. Okay. The Hawaiian traditional spirituality. And they're the wisdom keepers for the fact that we are a trinity of being. And they're the originators of the term higher self that everyone is using these days. Oh. And um, So we give kudos to that. Yes. Okay. And, and it ties in with Christianity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is the Trinity, the Holy okay. Trinity. And uh, so they're the wisdom keepers of we're actually a trinity of beings. We're actually a conscious mind self who's who we think we are that's doing all of this. But we also have a soul that we're not usually not aware of. QHHT is helping us be aware and to integrate with our souls. Okay. Because it has been we are separate from our souls. Right. And we're separate from our higher selves. So we are in the process of integrating our three selves into one whole. So that's healing. Oh, I've seen the Trinity. That's the whole. Idea. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the uh, third dimension. What, what is this third, fourth, and fifth dimension? Third dimension, which is what we think it is. Our conscious mind thinks this is the reality, you know, this third dimension. Right. And third dimension is set up by God as a polarity, which is very important. That's why souls want to come here. It's a very, uh, it's hard. It's harder than a lot of dimensions, but it's, it really uh, challenges a soul to be all they can be and be as strong and in, in, in their power as they can be. Yeah. Because of going through all of this struggle, that, that this dichotomy, this um, good and evil, good and bad, male and female, War and peace, you know, we come here for that experience, yeah. which is valuable. Yes. You know, but we're shifting out of that. And now, fourth, fourth, fourth is actually we've been in it all along, uh, but we haven't realized it. Some have realized it. It's the fourth dimension, it's the astral plane, you could call it. You know, it's, it's very similar to third in that there's polarity there too, but it's more exaggerated. That's fourth. Fourth dimension is more extreme, and we're interacting with it all the time. We just don't realize it, most of us. And so we're already there, and we're mastering that too. We don't. We're not just. We can't just master third. We got to master fourth as well to get to fifth. When we get to fifth, we've mastered energy. Okay. We are energy. Okay. We become pure energy. Mm-hmm. We become energy bodies. Beautiful, you know. And, and it's it's all love. It's all unconditional love. It's beautiful. It's, it's what Jesus was telling us about. It's, you know, it's the new, and it's the new heaven and the new earth. The third dimension is limited by beliefs, right? It's that's all about partially, belief. Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. So you would agree with Yeah, there's beliefs there. Okay, that's Piscean age. Belief is Piscean age. Part of it is we're shifting from Piscean age into Aquarian age. Okay. Piscean age was all about just believing just taking someone's word for it, you know, right. a, 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 a priest or whoever, you know. Um, a priest, a doctor, yes, a, a parent, cur- yes. it could be anything. Pa- yes, authority so, figures. So we're severely limited by these. Yes, yes, because now we go, fifth dimension is part of it is shifting into the Aquarian age as the whole universe is. You know, it isn't just, mm-hmm. we're mm-hmm. shifting out of, in fact, we're not just going into fifth here on earth. The whole universe is getting an upgrade. You know, some planets are probably going from sixth to seventh or whatever. Mm-hmm. So all that's going on, you know? 
Mm -hmm. um, it's so uh, it's it's just about okay beliefs. Beliefs are Piscean age. You just believe it. You have blind faith. You know you take someone else's word for it. Aquarian age is about knowing. You know ah, the truth. Beautiful. It's not believing it. It's knowing it. Mm -hmm. You you know uh, by then you you figured it out. You know it. <laughs> you know it isn't. You're not just believing it. So instead of coming getting your information from a belief which is outside. Yes. You're getting it from within. Right. Exactly. Now more than ever, things are being exposed. What do you uh, What do you feel about that? An example of that is our medical system. You know, we are, uh, we've been conditioned to um, take uh, the advice of authority figures sure. instead of feeling our, what we need right. for ourselves. Right. And to, um, and to... Ignore a second opinion. Yes. And to know that we have the power to heal ourselves. Nice. We do. Yes. We do have that power and we need to, it's being exposed that we can do that instead of putting ourselves back in, a, those in a again. position where we are following authority figures. Mm -hmm. You know, that mm -hmm. may have the wrong idea, <laughs> beliefs that they're instilling, you know? You know, so we're thinking about it ourselves. We're, we're, um, we're learning how to be our own healer, our own doctor. So discernment. Discernment. Discernment, yes. Has someone you love that was very dear to you pass away? The death can feel like you're separated from them. All you want is to stay connected, communicate, and continue that relationship. You can. You do not need a medium or psychic to make that connection. You can learn to connect directly with that loved one yourself. I'm Julie Dillon McMahon. We can have a one-on-one -on -one session to experience just that. Go to lifetoafterlife.com and book a session with me.